Welcome! This tutorial on modeling data with OpenRefine is part of the Querying Art History Data on the Web video tutorial series. It is produced in cooperation with the University of Jena and the project Digital for Humanities – Digital Research Methods in Art History. The video tutorial series Querying Art History Data on the Web contains various methods of querying, modeling and analyzing art history data. OpenRefine is a powerful tool for working with messy data. What is OpenRefine and why would you want to use it? OpenRefine helps to clean up messy data sheets and to prepare them for further visualization and analyzation. Before you start visualizing and analyzing either your own data or data coming from the web, you need to clean and model the data if you want to get reliable results and visualizations without errors. This is an important feature for OpenRefine. You need precise entries of data without duplications or inconsistencies of spelling. You can either use data coming from your own research project. Let's say you are writing a dissertation which includes your collection of data that you would like to analyze. Or you are finding institutional data on the web and you would like to know better what this is about and start working with it. In fact, OpenRefine allows to quickly look through big data sets and understand what this is about. It is an easy way to get an overview of a data set and its contents. Let's say you are working with a data set from the web, you would like to know which categories are involved and what to expect within these categories. Once you have an idea of your data set, you can approach it with research questions and model it and analyze it. You would want to avoid visualizations looking like this, coming from a dirty data sheet where entries are doubled because of spelling errors clearly visible on the left. This is just one example out of many why data need to be modeled before you can use them. Multiple entries for the same thing or people do not only disqualify your visualizations but also your analyses. Before any meaningful visualization can happen, you need to get rid of spelling errors, be consistent about entries and have clear ideas about the categories you would like to visualize. This needs some careful manipulation of the spreadsheet. OpenRefine works similar to a spreadsheet like Excel, but it has much more functionalities to transform huge data sets just without some easy clicks or with more advanced expressions. The transformation and modeling of data is in fact one of its biggest advantages and a necessary preliminary step. Another important feature that goes well beyond normal spreadsheets is the possibility to enrich your dataset through external services using linked data from the web. What are the requirements to use OpenRefine? OpenRefine is a free tool and it is open source. You simply need to install it and there you go. OpenRefine works best with Google Chrome, but also with Safari, Edge and other browsers if this is possible. You should have Java installed before you are starting with OpenRefine or alternatively the more complex Java runtime environment. In case it is useful, you can open OpenRefine on your computer in several tabs and work with them contemporaneously. It depends on your computer's RAM capacities if this works. Your data only lives on your computer and remains private. OpenRefine never stores your data. This means also that when you have to save your data at the end, of your session because otherwise it's lost. Once you close OpenRefine, the data goes away. You can find the download instruction for Windows, Mac and Linux on the OpenRefine homepage. Just some quick additions. When you start using OpenRefine on a PC, a little terminal window opens which needs to remain open the whole time you are using the program. A Mac does not require this terminal window. However, it may happen that some Macs require an additional approval on the tool of the security side of the settings. Several file formats are compatible with the OpenRefine program, for example, XML, JSON, CSV and TSV. 
Often, JSON and CSV work better than the other two. There are several ways how to create a project and upload it into OpenRefine. You can either upload a file, copy and paste an URL from a web address, copy and paste data directly into the clipboard, upload a database, or use data from a Google Sheet. Once you have decided which option is best for your data, you can click on Next. Here I'm showing an example for a JSON file upload. Above you can see the JSON code, which was automatically detected by OpenRefine as such. However, we need to visualize the code as a table, and therefore it needs a little exploring of the best options below, which works best for your file. In this case, it needs checking the box Attempt to pass cells into numbers, and the table appears. Next, you can name your project and then click on Create Project, and now you are ready to start working. The file we are looking at here now comes from the Metropolitan Museum of New York. It is an artist's list which the museum posted on GitHub. You immediately recognize the entries under which the museum has stored the data like name, nationality, gender, date, and so on. When you click on the little arrow next to this entry, you realize a series of options which are now available for the respective column. Let us explore a few of them. Since this is a file coming from the web without much explanation, we know a little about its content. It is therefore a good idea to familiarize with it. We can do some quick checks of the file in order to see what we are dealing with here. Choosing the column Nationality, I click on Facet, next Text Facet, and a box opens on the left with an overview of the respective nationalities present in the whole file, together with the numbers of occurrences. Getting an overview of your data sheet or doing some easy cleaning can be facilitated by a function called Common Transforms which lets you transform your data with some easy clicks, like eliminating white space, using upper or lower case, or defining numbers and letters. Let's say, not knowing what this data is about, you want to get an idea of the time span of the artworks and artists in this sheet. Choosing the column date, we first need to transform the number placed here into a date. This works by going Edit Cells, then Common Transforms, then clicking on To Date. Next, I can do a similar thing to the first steps, clicking on the facet and then a timeline facet. A box opens on the left, showing the birth dates of the artists present in this file. We see that the majority here was born between 1720 and 2017. These easy steps get you familiarized with a data file that is not yours. You can go ahead and try something similar with the other columns, like department, material, gender, or else. Usually a datasheet is full of typos and minor errors. There is an easy way to get rid of those. In our col gender column, we go to Facets, then click on Text Facets, which opens on the left. There you see the option to cluster. Click on this and you will see the doubled entries with minor misspellings in the sheet and you can easily clean them from here. But we can also manipulate the data. Pretending the file came without nationality and birth date and you had to filter this information out of the artist's bio, we can go ahead and split this column. We go to Edit Column, then Split into several columns, then indicating the separator comma, and this result are two separated columns. In the next step, we might want to get rid of the word born and leave the number. Therefore, we go to Edit Cells, then Replace, where we fill in the word born in the first box and leave the second box blank. We see the word disappearing. There is still a white space in front of the number, which should be eliminated. Therefore, we go to Edit Cells, then Trum and Transforms, then trim leading and tailing white space, and the space disappears.
here comes a task for you. Try to upload your data set or a set from the web into OpenRefine. Now try the facet and cluster options and familiarize yourself with the data set. If you need to, you can undo step by step all the entries you have done. There are also ways to single out and delete entries in your datasheet. Let us now look at some more advanced modeling steps of our datasheets. OpenRefines comes with some enhancements which make it easier to manipulate data on an advanced level. They are the Grel and Jython computer languages which are similar to the computer language Python. Jython is a combination of Python and Java. Some help pages make it easy to use, also without any knowledge of computer languages. And here you go. There are several pages available with explanations and introductions and recipes. Here you will find the ready-to-use strings you can copy and paste into your OpenRefine application. Go and familiarize yourself with the way these codes work. Let us explore some easy steps. We are looking at the Pittsburgh Museum artist file. We see that the column with the creation date contains not just the year, but also includes the 1st of January as a random date. If we wanted to get rid of this, we can do the following. We go to Edit Cells, then Transform, then Place into the Grell expression box the string that cuts out the year, as you see in this box. The preview will tell us immediately if this has worked. You may click on OK and see the result. There are also very advanced steps for which you may find ready-to-use strings on the recipes help pages like this one, which cuts out names. Let's say you have a sheet with a provenance or credit lines, which mentions some provenance policies and also names of donors. To get a better and quick idea who these people were, you can do the following. We go to Edit Cells, then Transform, then place the string that cuts out the name. The preview will tell us immediately if this has worked. You may click on OK and see the result. Cutting names this way is not a 100% accurate procedure, but it helps when you are navigating through a data set and trying to get an overview. For accurate results, you would need more steps, and there are also different methods to do this. We are coming to task 2. Check out some Grell recipes. So far, we have looked into OpenRefine and its capacities to clean, model and analyze data. But there is more you can do with it. OpenRefine works with APIs, which allow data enrichment through external sources. This means that linked data from other sources may be used and pulled into your OpenRefine sheet. Here is a list of some available services. You need to copy and paste these strings into the appropriate field in your OpenRefine. To start reconciling, click on the column you would like to enhance, let's say the artist names. Click on Reconcile and start reconciling. A window opens where you can add new standard services from the box below. Paste your URL here and the service will appear in your list above. Usually Wikidata comes already as a default. The service you are choosing depends on what you would like to obtain. Wikidata has the largest possibility of choices, also for adding more values on your reconciled entries and additional steps. The Virtual International Authority file VF is good for names, while GeoName is useful for geographic information. Let us use Wikidata for the purpose of using reconciled values in the second step. We start reconciling on the artist name column. This will take a while with big files. To get more reliable results, we can add as a proof the verification of the nationality and information we already have available. We are reconciling here the name against the Wikidata entry human, which corresponds in Wikidata to the value Q5. 
Note that this service, you are not limited to the listed categories. You can reconcile against any Wikidata category and value by adding further down in the list the Wikidata value for what you need. Reconciling takes a while. This can be a few minutes, but also out half an hour or longer if your file is very large and your computer's RAM capacity is low. Next, you need to confirm the entries where Wikidata encounters a case of doubt, usually due to homonyms. Check either match this cell or match all identical cells if you are sure that your person is likely to be the same throughout your sheet. As your data is now linked with Wikidata, you can get more values into your sheet. Go to Edit Column and then Add Column from Reconciled Values and choose what you might need. This can be any entry from the list, like a place of birth, occupation, or whatever. Or you can choose any category from Wikidata by supplying the property code. There are plenty available, like occupation of a person which is P106, field of work, position held, and so on. It is often difficult to decide which property is the best, but note that you can also add more than one value and thereafter combine the added columns. Once you have done this, a new column gets added to your sheet. Remember that OpenRefine never saves your data and therefore you need to export it. In the top right corner, you'll find the export button with several options like CSV, TSV, Excel files and more. Your choice obviously depends on how you're going to use your data next. Often CSV is the preferred data format for other tools. If you have used the reconciliation services, bear in mind that you might lose the direct links to Wikidata, although not the added values you have included in your datasheet. At the end of your session, you will always need to export your data as OpenRefine does not store it. After the export, your dataset is ready to be visualized and analyzed. There are plenty of tools to do this. Here are a few more OpenRefine tutorials which may be useful for you. We welcome you back to our next video on art history data on the web. In video number six, you will learn about digital images and the IIIF framework.